I guess all these conferences have to have themes, troubling topics at TAC 12 that nobody else would talk about. You know, we're grateful for uh, ACU come on to their uh, campus tomorrow and get tours of these facilities. It's essentially the last chance that we're going to have to do this. Uh, once it's a nuclear facility, it'll be a lot harder and more regulated. So uh, that's why we kind of had short notice. One of the things I want to talk about since we are at Abilene Christian University environment here, yeah, I was a pretty spiritual kid. I even like toyed with the idea of being a priest. I went to Our Lady of Perpetual Help School, Loyola Academy. And some of you might know that uh, Loyola's motto is uh, men for others. And uh, men for others is the curse that, uh, you know, once I heard, found out about thorium, I was like, ah, now I got to do something about this. <laughs> I've been cursed with the idea of trying to make this available to everybody, you know, on earth. How can God be, you know, you know, man, spirit, you know, God? And uh, they said, yo, there's a famous uh, triple point for water. And uh, you can find these on YouTube. Obviously, I just took a screenshot there. And uh, water can be frozen and a gas and a liquid at the same time. So I thought, huh, that's, <laughs> that's pretty interesting. You know, there's a, a precedence for, uh, you know, for you know, kind of letting these Venn diagrams of these, you know, the science and the spiritual kind of overlap and help explain each other. So I said, well, how can, I, how can I apply that to what we're here to talk about today? So this is about where thorium comes from. Mostly, not all of it. There's stuff like thorite and, and uh, things like that. But the vast majority of where we would be getting thorium for the things that we want to do with it comes from this phosphate rock. And uh, that happens to be monazite. This is why we also say this is a critical materials conference, right? Because they're, they're intricately linked. They can, they're brothers, they're twins. They're always going to, they, they have to be taken in the same, same breath. There's generally composed of three things. There's your critical materials. There's your fertilizer. You know, that's a phosphate. That's why people mine these rocks. And there's your energy to, to run all of society. <laughs> so... We got these in this one rock. Rare earths and enable advanced technologies of tomorrow. Phosphates and dical phosphates are the fertilizer of life. There's a desperate need for it throughout the world. And thorium, you know, look at all this. Fuel, sure, you know, we got fuel, but also alloys, catalysts, lighting, electronics, ceramics, the greatest cancer medicine on earth superconductors, and we barely know anything, barely, we've, sc we've hardly scratched the surface. Maybe someday we're going to be able to reintroduce uh, thorium-based products and not just fuels. So, yet, in the West, in the Western world, what do we do with this rock, right? Well, at best, we take the phosphate from it and we use it for fertilizer and everything else we throw away. So these are the phosphate stones, the mineral stones that we throw away, and we reject them because we fear them. We fear the power that's held inside them. And because we've become fearful cowards in the West, <laughs> we've been given the solution to hunger, to all the technology needs and advanced materials, endless energy abundance, we throw it away because we fear the immense energy in the thorium. And there's some uranium in there too, but we've based policy on fear, and that's not how you want to live. And so 50 plus years at least, we've let greed and avarice guide our decisions, and we threw this miracle rock away. Someone, someone gave us this phosphate mineral this monazite, this apatite, xenotime, basazite. <clears throat> and we've had the solutions to food, water, advanced technologies, most importantly, energy. We've had them. And yet we spit in the eye of this opportunity to really make a difference. So I say no more. You, me, everybody in this room, all the people online right now, 
And in the weeks and years to come that watch this online, we're going to free the phosphate stone and we're going to create a future with that rare earth and we are going to free the atom and we're going to power everything, everything with thorium. It's been, uh, it's been around for a long time, far too long. Uh, we've been at this for 15 years. 2009 is when the first conference was. But we're, we're closer than that. ever. A lot, a lot of times it doesn't seem like we're making progress, but you know, we're, we're in for the long haul, right? right? Uh, uh, we're, we're going, going to win this race. race. And we're, we're going to do it with, with this misfit sworn rock. Phosphate, rare earth, mineral stones filled. And now these stones that were rejected are going to be the cornerstones. So as my... Uh, Friend Robert Bryce said, you know, let's build a cathedral of energy. And so those are the stones you're going to build a cathedral of energy with. Uh, Flybe has a new CEO, and uh, our friend Joe Bonametti, who's been a longtime supporter, is still working there. Uh, you know, bringing, uh, he, he developed tons of technologies with uh, DARPA. And uh, so I'm sure he's going to professionalize everything and, and, and help Flybe make some progress. Thorcon still in the game. They're, they're, uh, proceeding along. Uh, excuse me. They're, uh, uh, they also are looking to get a new CEO soon. Sadly, they've, uh, they aren't using <laughs> their very name, their namesake Thorcon. They, uh, they're not using uh, thorium anymore. They are gonna, but, uh, like terrestrial energy, they are going to at least use uh, low-enriched uranium, so at least they, that's smart. TerraPower, uh, we're going to have a discussion about TerraPower later from Carl Pauls, but basically uh, they've recently just got a construction permit uh, going for Wyoming, so you know, let's see if they can pull that across the line. And uh, uh, there's a, when it comes to thorium-based stuff, they're still working on uh, U-233, and thorium milking process uh, to, uh, to make medicines. China Academy of Science, as far as we know, from what I've heard, and I've spoken to a few people, the LF1 was started. They had a few problems, might have been a leak, we're not sure. They apparently seem to have gotten it back, and uh, from what I hear, it's, it's running. Uh, maybe Dr. Holcomb knows more, but uh, that's, so, the, uh, you probably know who I was talking to about that, but uh, so. But really great stuff in the world of thorium is uh, clean core thorium energy. Uh, Mahul Shaw and his kid and a few other folks, they've actually started uh, accelerated uh, fuel testing. There's our buddy Just Gene shaking Mahul's hand. So they've got their thorium based uh, fuel for can do reactors being tested at INL right now. So that's. Pretty good stuff, you know. Uh, it's a kind of a discreet application, but hey, he's making progress. So you got to really hand it to Mahul. Hopefully, they'll be done with the the fuel testing, and they'll start selling the uh, can-do fuel soon. I'm very proud of this. That uh, Byron Donalds, uh, he's introduced quite a few pieces of legislation. Many of them specifically addressing. Uh, uh, thorium and thorium needs and critical materials applications. Um, very proudly, you know, we were, many of you know that we've been working very closely with El Salvador for <clears throat> much of the last year. And Naib, the president, Naib Bukele, just signed uh, an agreement, with the IAEA, and as it says up there, El Salvador is going nuclear. So uh, Jim and I go to Washington, D.C. at, uh, at uh, ridiculous amounts of times. And, uh, and there's, uh, there's growing support for this. So that's why I say it's been a long, 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 painful journey in many, <laughs> many respects. But uh, it feels like, you know, we're just about to pull that pebble out from this giant boulder. There's a lot of uh, uh, pent-up energy, and I think we're about to get that pebble finally out, and the, the giant boulder can roll down the hill. That's uh, your first assessment for the day, and we'll, we'll wait for uh, Generation Atomic to do theirs.